Hello everybody, welcome back to One Leads here. It is Connor and we are back with a little bit of a, a little bit of an evaluation of the transfer window after recent news has emerged uh, from, from several news sources really, indicating that Leeds are going to be doing uh, no business unless uh, a Crescenzio Somerville exit is uh, allowed. So yeah, I just wanted to come in here and speak about it. A lot of you guys have been asking me on Twitter, been asking me and on Instagram. Make sure you follow me on all of those uh, networks, by the way, of, of of what I think. And I, I just I haven't rated the window at all, to be to be quite frank with you. I think it's been a really poor window. I think Leeds have stood still. I think other clubs around us have moved. You know, you look at Burnley even recently, it looks like they're going to be bringing in Veghorst and uh, Orsic as well, two signings which you you could argue are better signings than just the player that is Chris Wood there. I know a lot of Burnley fans weren't that bothered about, about Chris Wood actually leaving there. So, uh, you know, there's an argument there that they've levelled up. Norwich, obviously, self-sustainable club, so it's going to be very difficult for them to be able to get to that next level unless they sell a player, which they haven't, obviously. Newcastle, who brought the lad in from Leon, who's an absolute baller. Um uh, and they looked up, according to Eddie Howe today, they're looking like they're going to be bringing in two more players on, on top of that. Everton, who brought in two players as well. Palace, apparently they're looking for uh, sort of an active end to the window. Brentford are apparently still looking. So, listen, when you take a calm, I won't say assured, because I think that's bias uh, to a certain perspective, but I think when you take a step back and look at it, I can understand the flip side of the coin, because I feel like I'm a measured fan. Is there any point in panicking right now if we can't get our number one deal done? Of course there isn't to a lot of people. But my rebuttal to that would be, is it not the recruitment job for an individual who's in charge of this entire sphere to be able to go out and get a player? There's a shortlist. We know there's a shortlist. There's always two or three players minimum per position. So there's a shortlist there. If we can't get a certain individual, why don't we move for those second, third, fourth, fifth signings? At least test the water, see what they're all about. And they might have done behind the scenes, Leeds. Leeds might be doing that behind the scenes. I doubt it at this moment in time because it seems like they've got all their eggs in one basket. So I understand the measured approach. What I don't understand is risking something you've worked for for 16 years on one window, which we've done. We didn't do enough for me in the summer in terms of outgoings. A lot of people are saying, Connie, you can't just bring players players in, in, in. I agree. Outgoings, there wasn't enough done. There was contracts handed out that shouldn't have been handed out. There was players that that remained that, that shouldn't have remained. There was players that, that, you know, arguably came in that shouldn't have came in for the value. So there's a lot of rebuttal to that. And I feel at the minute, taking a measured approach and going again in the summer is a risk. It's a complete risk. Now, why is that a risk, Connor? Well, because we're looking at a scenario now, and we've spoken about it on the debrief before, and we've spoken about it on the channel. We don't have any competition at left back, but apparently that's not a position we're looking at. Goalkeeper, we've got no competition there, but that's not a position we're looking at. Right back, that doesn't seem like a position we're looking at either. It seems the only position in this lineup that Leeds are looking at is a central attacking midfielder. Now, the central attacking midfielder role has been something that hasn't been sorted out for a long time now, four years, in fact, eight transfer windows, which is just pure negligence on the part of Leeds United. And especially as a business, it's pure negligent. You know, if you need something that desperately, if you've gone for players within that position so desperately, like we have all the way back to Michael Cuisance, you get that sorted. That's priority number one. That's something you sort out in November, December, pre-planning for January. You know, you've got your, your targets listed three targets. If we can't get one, we'll go for the other. Does that mean the other's a worse player? No. It just means that the first one isn't working. A shortlist isn't based on player quality. A shortlist is just on player availability. They should have known Leeds United that Brendan Aronson was going to be very, very difficult to get this window. They should have known that before the January window for me. So I understand that people are pretty chilled about it and think we can go again in the summer but once again it's all comprised on a certain factor of injuries we have the thinnest squad with the most injuries now that doesn't line up well for me and in terms of long term uh, sorry in 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 you know when looking at the long term that's all I think about I don't look at the short term that's why I get criticized on this channel because sometimes I don't embrace the moment because I'm looking two or three games down the line or two or three years down the line for me as I've said at the start 
you can buy players now in a market where not many people are active in this market because it's a dangerous market. It's not a nice market. Leeds were willing to go up to £20 million for an American midfielder. Okay, so Leeds were clearly willing to be active in this window. So for people to just turn around and say, well, I'm not bothered if we do anything in the window. These people were bothered two weeks ago. And what's the loan market for? Donny van der Beek out there on the verge of joining Crystal Palace, a direct relegation rival. Doesn't mean that they're going to sign him in the summer. I don't, I don't think they will. I think the value will be too high. They might do, but the value will be too high for Donny van der Beek. But why on earth wouldn't Leeds at least attempt to try and get him? He'd be perfect and he'd suit the squad immediately. He really would. Yeah, get him up to fitness, but it's not going to take any longer than three or four weeks. And he's an upgrade on what we've got. All we've been told is we won't go out and get a player unless it's an upgrade. But this is a significant upgrade. How good is the expectation that these players are? These players, by the way, will will hopefully keep us up from relegation. But how? what's the next step for these players? Can they get to that next level? Can they? How, how up is their trajectory? I don't think it's that far, to be quite honest with you. I don't think this group of players is going to consistently keep you in the top 10 of the Premier League. And that's what expectations were for a lot of Leeds fans this year. I turned around and said, I think we'll finish 13th. I got berated for that. Every single Leeds fan thought it was going to be 12th and upwards. I'm not saying it won't be, but that was the expectation at the start. And now suddenly it's turned into staying up, which it wasn't. It wasn't at all. I have maintained this from day one. If you follow this channel, none of my long-term opinions change. I can be proved wrong. I can be, of course I can, on certain individuals. But my long-term opinions always stay the same. And I was saying this at the start. So, I, ju I, just, I just can't understand for the life of me how the, the, uh, the, the rhetoric is we won't bring in players because they're not better than the current ones and we will only wait until summer to bring in certain individuals that could be better than this because there are players available now. There is an advantage in the January market, as I've said, because nobody else does business there. And I actually think that was a strategy by Leeds United. Nobody else is going to be going in for Brendan Aronson now because January is a horrible market. Let's go in now. Let's get an advantage because best believe everybody, the kids' notoriety has gone through the roof now. There will be other clubs in for him in the summer, 100%. And for people saying that the value is going to depreciate in the, in the summer window, that is absolute rubbish. If this guy continues at the level he is, there's now a lot of a lot of sort of, as I've just said, um, sort of acknowledgement of who he is and what he's doing in his business. There is going to be more clubs looking at him now, especially if this world-renowned coach in Marcelo Bielsa is looking at him. It, there's just so many aspects to it. I feel in the Premier League, if you stand still, we've seen it multiple times before. We're arguably seeing it with Burnley this year in terms of their summer window and their year-on-year-on-year -on -year -on -year recruitment, which a lot of Leeds fans point at and think, look, you've not done the right things. You've not moved in the window for years and years and years. Well, Leeds aren't moving in this window. And it's all well and good turning around and saying, well, they think it's sufficient. They think the depth is sufficient. If they thought the depth was, uh, excuse me, if they thought the depth was sufficient, they wouldn't be going out for Brendan Aronson now. They wouldn't be looking at Minamino at Liverpool, which they're doing, apparently. But, you know, that's that's another conversation. Minamino at Liverpool is available. You know, they've just brought, it looks like they're bringing in Luis from Porto. Don't only go and get Minamino if we sell Crisencio Somerville, just go and get Minamino if he's available, if we can afford it. Just go and get him. It's not a frivolous sort of naive strategy to look at. Minamino is a young player. He was within the RB setup for years, you know, playing a pressing system. He's played in the Jurgen Klopp system in a pressing way. He can play central, central attacking midfield. He can play out wide. He's played there for Liverpool. He's got a silky touch. He'd fit into this side. He's got he's got all the attributes. Maybe not the, the 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 six stone fitness level that you need to get to, but that can happen. So that's improving the squad. So why not go out and get it? There's so many excuses at the minute. So many excuses from the fans about this. Oh, we don't need Min Minamino is not part of the strategy. How do you know what the strategy is? We're all just speculating. But I'm just trying to apply some realism from what I know what the Premier League is. We are one injury away. One injury away from our Brazilian superstar from being in a perilous state, a problematic state. Because apart from the two games, the, out, out of the last three, you take that Brazilian superstar out of every other game this season, Leeds are in deep trouble. 
deep, deep trouble. And that's because of the injury state. And that's because of the squad size. And that's also because of players not stepping up to the mark. We've not seen as many goals from Stuart Dallas. Before these last two, we haven't seen enough from Harrison. Dan James has not been enough. Tyler Roberts has not been enough. Rodrigo, there hasn't been enough. So players aren't stepping up like they were last season. Take out Tyler Roberts, obviously. So the creativity, the goals, the assists, what are we banking on? One player. Because for me, it looks like Patrick Bamford, unfortunately, is going to keep picking up knocks, knocks and niggles here and there. So three separate injuries in six months. So that's ridiculous. Um, I mean, the club's logic will evidently be that we're likely to stay up this season, even if we don't make transfers in January. I understand we've stayed out of the relegation zone despite of our injuries. We've got a decent buffer and we're expecting our squad to be reintroduced. It looks like Calvin's back in training in, in February. Um, and we are looking for the long term. But but the rebuttal to that is, well, we don't know where the manager's going to be. We don't know where the board's going to be. We don't know if the 49ers are going to take full control. So how do you know where we're going to be in three or four years' time? Why are we planning for three or four years' time? We could get a manager in with a completely different philosophy, ethos and style to what we have right now. So are we planning on the next three or four years? You know, I just think it's it's a big gamble. Leeds have to stay up, and I can't I can't reiterate this more. They cannot go down, okay. And with twenty eight absentees already this season, I don't know how stark this needs to be. I don't know how stark it needs to be when you've got a fifteen year old on the bench. I don't know how stark it needs to be when you've given eight youth players Premier League debuts. And you go down and it's impossible not to see this as a complete failure by the board, a complete failure by the manager, a, com a complete failure to do with everything to do with Leeds United. So it, it's on them now. It really is because Leeds now, they've had the opportunity. They've had four weeks to sort it out, a central midfielder, which has been a crying problem for four years now. The last central midfielder we brought in was Adam Forshaw. Please think about that. Now, if they are being cautious and assuming we do stay up, this potentially could put us in a strong position next summer. We'll have, we'll have money that we haven't spent in January. targets hopefully drawn up a little bit of clarity in, in terms of what's going on with the manager what's going on with Rafinha what's going on with Calvin Phillips what's going on with the injury status what's going on with players outgoing all these problems that need to be sorted by the way in in the summer which is going to be a massive overhaul and a full and, and, and an, an identity change in terms of where they think that we're going in terms of a club because I don't know you don't know for me I've said all along consolidation is staying in the division, making yourself a Premier League team. No team has a divine right, even if you are Leeds United, to be in the Premier League. So I've always said consolidation, but it's the expectations of the club, of us being a top 10 side, of us being a top eight, top six side, that are making me worry about this whole project. And for me, all of this needed to be done in phases. You know the players who I wanted out in this January window in terms of moving them on. Good luck. Sayonara. Thank you. No sentiment attached. But it's a hell of a job for him in the summer. It's a hell of a job for him in the summer. And let's hope that this rhetoric of the bottom three, four teams are worse than us with just a, a flippant backhand by most fans. Nah, they're not, they're not as good as us, even though we've just been beaten at home by one of them comes to the fore and is correct. Squad morale is something I wanted to touch on as well. I wonder what they're all feeling. I wonder if Calvin was looking at this and thinking, God, they've got to bring some players in. I wonder if Rafa was looking at this and thinking, we've got to bring some players in because they're not stupid. 
They will not be stupid. Calvin as his, as has his his finger on the pulse with the Leeds fans as well. He'll know exactly what everybody else was thinking, and I wonder if he shares that sentiment. But for me, long-term investments could have been made in the January window, and it's now a huge, huge risk. And that bench could have been thickened up hugely. Even if you're bringing in some signings who we're all like, Ugh, but they thicken up that bench that give Leeds more options. We could have gone in the loan market and brought in someone for six months, i.e. Donny van der Beek, who's played in a very pressy Ajax system, by the way. A lot of you talking about the system, another excuse. Can be trained into that. It's a fantastic player. Crystal Palace, argue. There's an argument that where, you know, in and around they are, in and around where, where they will be finishing up and all this sort of stuff. Why can they go get them and we can't? Strengthening their 11 and their bench. I don't think there'd have been knee-jerk signings. I don't think bringing in players, which Leeds were actively looking to do in the January, would have been a knee-jerk reaction to what's going on with the squad at the minute, phasing certain players out, bringing certain players in, starting this overhaul. People hate the term, but an overhaul, which it's going to be. Because this renovation, this re regeneration cycle needs to happen right now. Um. Yeah, I'm just not happy. I'm not happy with how it's gone. Um, as I've said to you guys, I've tried to speak about what I think other people's points of view are, but I think it just had, it was a necessity. It was a necessity Leeds brought in at least someone. We weren't begging out for 10 players. We're not begging for, for eight, six, five, four players. We're begging for one player, two players, and it would have been a great window. Two players in, two players out. Great window. Dependent on the players, obviously. But I just think they're playing Russian roulette with Premier League survival, which if we were to get relegated, God, my Lord, everybody, with a net spend of 150 million, the wages that some of these players on, the manager, the takeover, it would be cataclysmic, catastrophic. So for me, they've missed the boat and here's hoping because it's up to them now. It's up to the players on the pitch to maintain the fitness and to elevate some of their performances to a state which they haven't been at at the start of the season. It's not been dramatic. It's not been overreactive. This is something I've said from the start. I wanted it to be a progressive thing. Summer window, January window, into the summer window again. And then we go into the season. With Then we go into it next year next season with a real, real momentum and vigour to get into that top 10, get into that top eight. Then the January window after that, we do a little bit there, but it just seems once again, once again, inactivity is a Leeds fan in the transfer window. And it feel, this one feels a lot worse. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, guys. I'd be really fascinated to hear your thoughts um, on this one. It's been, a, it's been a tough one to film, but I think we're all in agreement that might have been a, a definite missed opportunity. Have a good one.